Hello and welcome to the Middle School Bookmarker Show. I'm Chris. And I'm Brianna. We're teachers reading this middle school novel for the very first time. We hope you'll read it along with us and then listen in on our conversation about it. This week we're covering Schooled by Gordon Corman, and we just read chapters 11 and 12. So if you haven't read them yet, go read them now. Oh, and by the way, we're going to get this whole show wrapped up in just 11 minutes, because 11 minutes is all you need to... Save your school bus driver's life by stealing the bus and starting a police chase. So, this first chapter, chapter 11, is narrated again by Hugh, who is Capricorn's pretty much only friend. And they start out with Hugh kind of talking about how this is his best school year ever because he is no longer the kid that's being bullied and picked on. He's anonymous. Yeah, he has a target off his back because Capricorn has it on his. And Hugh does feel guilty about this, but he also feels pretty powerless. If he could stop the bullying, he would have stopped it against him. And if he could stop it against Cap, he would have stopped he would stop it against Cap, but he simply doesn't have the power. He's a victim. Right, so he's talking about how he's a victim and he is saying the worst place to be a victim is on the bus because the bus is like a war zone. And the bus driver know. doesn't pay attention and it's just like crazy stuff goes down. And I know you you attended a whole bunch of different schools, Brianna. Oh yeah. Um, I know that my bus on my school was was like this. It was chaos. It was a war zone, or at least some of the years it was. So when Hugh was describing some of the scenes on the bus with spitballs flying and it just see I I immediately jump back to when I was in middle school and saw the same thing. Yeah, distinctly, I think fifth and sixth grade were the years that the bus was the craziest, like it kind of peaked. And this is the time that the story takes place, which I think is um, pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, it, it's gotten better now because people actually started paying attention to how they're supposed to run buses and how to keep things more orderly. But from what I hear from my students, it can be pretty crazy some, sometimes, which is probably why uh, their bus driver, Mr. Rodrigo, he didn't even bother looking behind most of the time. He just kept his eyes on the road because he didn't want to see all the crazy things that were happening. Yeah, so the what what's going on while Mr. Rodrigo is not paying attention is Hugh notices that kids are lighting matches and throwing them at Capricorn. Which is insane. Absolutely. That, I think that that's beyond bullying. That's, that's like assault. Oh, th- yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you could die. <laughs> I, when I was reading, I was pretty fearful that his hair was going to catch on fire. And then my prediction in that moment was his hair was going to catch on fire and then he'd be made fun of for it or something like that. That's where I thought we were going. But they take a crazy left turn. Right. And the bus driver actually, it's assumed that he has a heart attack. Um, they they don't, I think, outright state it. I know that a couple of the characters make assumptions. Yep. Um, and so because he kind of clutches his chest and just goes unconscious he falls out of his seat and so the kids all start freaking out but capricorn being capricorn takes over driving the bus and asks where the nearest hospital is and everyone freezes and a lot of kids stay frozen but naomi does step up and she runs to the front and begins navigating for capricorn everyone's kind of standing there slack jawed not knowing what to do almost in disbelief about the situation Hugh even says something like, Cap, you you can't drive a bus, which he admits immediately after is silly because Cap is driving the bus. Right. And I think Naomi really steps up here. She starts barking directions and takes an initiative, um, which surprised me a little bit. But then once she started talking, I wasn't as surprised mm-hmm. um, because I think her she's kind of coming out of her shell as a character. And it's really interesting to see how she is reacting in stressful situations. Yeah, it's been it's been cool hearing her inner thoughts during her chapters because and then seeing her in other characters' chapters, because we really are seeing the evolution of her. She really prioritized just pleasing Zach, but as she becomes more and more aware of the world and as she changes, she begins to change her priorities. And this chapter and the next one, they I think they really show that a lot. So Cap is driving successfully but erratically towards the hospital being being navigated by Naomi, by Naomi. The dispatcher chirps in, and I guess they knew from GPS or because people were calling saying there's a bus driving crazy. 
uh, the dispatcher calls and says, you're off track, what's going on? And eventually the dispatcher finds out what's going on because they explain it. And he says, you need to stop. We're going to call the police. And Cap says, no. Cap sees this as a life endangering situation. So he actually switches the radio off to the dispatcher for the buses. And he, and he just waits for Naomi to guide him. Suddenly he sees lights behind him, though. Yes, so a whole bunch of police cars start following the bus and they're yelling for Capricorn to pull over the bus, pull over the bus, and he's not listening. And he, he draws this quote from his memory, something that Rain says uh, to the forefront, and I think he actually tells Hugh, and Rain told him pre- Rain told Cap previously that you always know what you're doing when you're doing the right thing. So Cap really feels here, like even though he's breaking the law, even though he's probably about to get arrested, even though no one really understands the situation, he feels like he's doing the right thing. And so he feels like he knows what to do and he's following his gut. And that was a scene that really stuck out to me because I was trying to put myself into any of the students' shoes and try to figure out what I would have done. And I can't imagine ever starting to drive a bus, you know, in any situation. I think I'd be so overcome by fear. (laughs) Yeah. Interestingly, I had that same thought. And I I thought, like, I probably would jump on the wheel of the bus. But when the dispatcher told me to stop, I I don't know if I would have had... I don't know if I would have made the same choice the cab did to keep going. Um, I don't think I would have either. But I respect his choice. Absolutely. you know, and it's it's interesting to say that because it's, you know, a situation where he's breaking the law. He's driving without a license again, but he's trying to save somebody's life. It's, it's one of those times where really just that specific context of that unique situation, you, you just kind of have to make the call in that moment. And Cap makes the call to keep driving. He leads those seven plus police cars to the hospital uh, uh, when, when he whips it into the ER front door. They're initially mad, but then they see Mr. Rodrigo. They get him onto a stretcher, but then the cops flood into the bus. The cops basically arrest Capricorn and they like put him down like on his stomach and make him put his arms behind his back and cuff him. Um, And they put him in the back of the police car and all the kids on the bus are like, oh my God, I can't believe they're arresting him. Like he just saved this man's life. And they all speak up. They all start saying like, no, he's helping. Stop. You shouldn't be arresting him. He helped. I think one of them says, like, he's a hero. Mm-hmm. Which I think he is. I think he is. I think he saved Mr. Rodriguez's life. Right. And that's how that chapter kind of wraps up. And we pick up with Capricorn in yeah, the next chapter. Minutes. Yeah. Blast through this baby. So, first off, he's talking about um, that show that he watches with Sophie, Trigonometry and Tears, and how he absolutely loves it. And it's the only show he's ever seen, and I, so I think it's really funny that he loves it so much. I but, also think it's funny because it's probably not that good of a show, but it's the only one he's ever seen. Oh, exactly. So he thinks, it's oh, probably he thinks it's amazing. <laughs> way over-dramatized. And, but he compares the characters in the show to the characters outside of the commune, so the characters he's seeing in public school every day, like, to the students. And, um... Everyone is mad at him, except for Rain, who gives him a call from the rehab center, and she gives him a congratulations and says that she's getting stronger every day. Uh, and then what happens? She prom- she, I want to make a point. She promises she's getting better and that they're going to return to the sanity of Garland because mm-hmm. Cap feels overwhelmed. He thinks he did the right thing because he saved this guy's life, but everyone else is mad. So the next day, Cap's trying to reestablish his balance, and he does what he does every morning. He is practicing Tai Chi, which if you don't know what Tai Chi is, I'm not an expert in it either, but it's kind of like a martial art and kind of like yoga in between the two. You don't actually do it with a partner. You just kind of move your body in really slow, controlled ways, and the discipline of moving slow and controlled is supposed to kind of like give you benefits. So he's doing Tai Chi, and suddenly, out of nowhere, Naomi shows up. Yeah, Naomi shows up and she actually joins him in doing Tai Chi and Cap like gently corrects her like, oh, you should be holding your hands like this. Um, And then he has to end his Tai Chi session early because he has to go to a press conference that the student body set up for him. Uh, And Naomi actually stops him. And she says, listen, you, you, you need to watch out for Zach. You got to watch out for Lena. You got to watch out for me even. You got to watch out for everyone. 
she tries to let Cap know that everyone's pulling a prank on him, but he doesn't really get it. So he proceeds to the press conference. This is not the first press conference he's had as president, but it is the first real one. Kids actually want to know what happened yesterday on the bus. So he's getting legit questions about the heart attack, about the driving, about the police. Mm -hmm. Zach gets upset about this, and he brings up the dance. Brand, I'm just going to blast through these last couple points. Zach brings up the dance to try to get everybody to stop talking about the bus. It reminds Cap that he hasn't prepared at all. Um, So afterwards, Cap is now thinking, after dealing with all the bus stuff, he's thinking, i got to set up for this dance. Well, two students, Trent and Caitlin, walk up to him, and they have some suggestions, and they have a couple ideas. They... Actually, and then Cap, because he has strong leadership, we're seeing more and more from him, he actually delegates and empowers them and says, hey, can you help set up the music? And Caitlin, you have some insight about the budget, which was pretty cool. All right, we are over time already. Uh, the secret word for this week is pimple. Uh, and for next time, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and ring the bell, and we'll be reading chapters 13 and 14 next time. All right, we will see you next episode.